and then our people. Very interesting way they did that. Here's an example of it, and here's what they did. Now, Stonehenge did the same thing. Stonehenge is based on two circles, one in the middle. It's also squaring the circle. But they only they make this, the circle and the square the same size. Still squaring the circle. Okay, so then we move on to the Islamic, uh, also into the Greeks. Uh, the Greeks, those guys, they weren't interested in squaring the circle because God had come down into their house. And they had their own house that God lived. But the Islamic people didn't do that. How did they deal with squaring the circle? Because all the real sacred geometry is based on it. Here's the square. Now, if you notice that the top of their dome is a little wider, it had to be because the circle had to be bigger than the square, right? So this is how they did it. They took the circle of the square and the circle of the, of the uh, equator of the circle, and it got out wider, so it was square in the circle again. And then they brought this tip up a little bit. Same thing. And this all based on root 2. Here's root 2. Here's the square. There's root 2. That's how I built their building. There's root 2 on this side, root 3. <coughs> and then they went up to the top of the middle square. It's all based on geometry. It's all based on sacred geometry because all the roots are, can't be measured. You can't measure them with a root. You can only do it with a compass. So, Byzantina did the same kind of thing here. Look how they did it. They made them equal. Well, I guess they didn't care about whether one was bigger than the other. They made them both the same. <laughs> okay, so now, we've got the Christians on the Gothic cathedral charts. The ideal. Okay, so they did the same thing. But they did it in a different way. Now you see that square right there, not square, but that hexagram, okay, is a cube. And I got it right here. You know, it's, it's a cube. Can you see the cube in this thing? There's a top. Now, Here's the top of the cube. Here's the two sides. It's kind of like a cube. <laughs> Good. And this distance right here is root three. That's how you get root three. Root three is the, is the foundation of our spiritual world on, on Earth. It's three dimensions. So everybody says, well, that's not a cube. Well, you can see it's a cube. But not really. It's not really a cube. Unless I put root three into it which I've been doing, and I, I push it out, and it becomes a cube, perfect. A perfect cube of root three. So don't tell anybody that that's not a cube. It is. <laughs> that cube is right there. So I made that cube uh, kind of in a little hexagram here, and that also fit Earth. This is the symbol of Earth. See? There's the symbol of Earth. So I made the Earth. Every time you can see that I have the Earth. Sometimes the Earth is square. Sometimes it's circular and square. Circular and square. Sometimes it's all circular. Okay. But the, the Renaissance, or the Gothic, was based on a visica. And a visica are two circles that come together, two spheres. Now what they do is, when these two come together, this is called balance between polarities. Because this is three, this is one third, one third, one third. And when we take this apart, we get the visica, which is a little flying saucer. Very nice shape. That is two equilateral triangles, and that's what the whole building is based on. You can see the visica running around here and running around here. You can see that three dimension of how it came about. It's two circles. So they base theirs on the cube because you can see when you unfold the cube that it takes on the form of the cross. Now what's interesting about this is that in the center of the cross, in the studies of 
charge is the heart chakra. It's right in the center of the cross. All right. So as we move on, I'm going to read something from Sphinx to Christ. This was a buddy of Bill Steiner. And he wrote in here in the last chapter, he said, a new religion needs a new architecture to express its main turn of thought. God dwelling upon the earth and teaching man as, as in the Greek temple, which is uh, this one. God dwelling upon the earth and teaching man, but set apart, inaccessible. The Gothic cathedral, the final expression of pure Christianity art, which gives it its tapering spires, so it's tall steeples like this on the outside, spires, <laughs> also represents the, the saints and the angels floating in the name. The new temple will be aimed at representing the influx of divine powers to the earth and to the heart of man. Man, okay, means human, doesn't mean man or woman. And expressing, in a sense, their reciprocal interactions through the ascending and descending movements, reversals. The plan of the building will no longer be based on the square, like the Greek temple or the cross, like the Christian church, but on the circle, or several intersecting circles. Well, there we come to everything else. Now, the Gertheon, uh, to me, is an uh, inspiration. He did something with this in sacred geometry. Uh, he had two architects working on this for two years. Keep telling him what to do. And he based this on two circles. I have found that these two circles are based on the moon and the earth. And he, there's nobody else that did that. This is based on the earth, earth and the square, earth and the sun. The Egyptians deal with the sun, of course you know that, and then of course the circle of it, all earth, earth and the sun, earth, earth, whatever. But we're going to have to do both. So what he did is he took the spheres and put them together. No stomach. Gotta get away from thinking it's through a steiner, it can't be touched, huh? You know? <laughs> so when I studied that, I thought I oh, this is great. I just think it's great. <laughs> this is the first Gertheon to burn down. Okay. So I studied the Gertheon here. Here's the first one. Two circles. <laughs> you can see that this is this part down here. And I mean, I hope I have this. I may not, but there was a picture I had of how he did it. And it made this play study. Okay, I'm about the third grade guy to do it better. But anyway, he did it, and he had this great idea. So I decided to find out if this had anything to do with the eye. So I turned this over into the eye, and I found out that those two circles create the lens of the eye. <laughs> and that's where all the lectures are given from this area. And that's also where the foundation stone, the foundation stone is right there. And that's where the podium is. I thought that was really good. <laughs> but this circle here is a circle that is creating the lens. It doesn't, it isn't there. See how it isn't there? But I tried to find out what circle that was. 